weekend Jerry bless him <laughs> he uh, decided he would play some Scottish music with Andy Stewart which of course would breach copyright regulations and get me into a lot of trouble so I've had to once again remove that particular soundtrack and uh, substituted something which I found which is quite nice quite jolly so sit back for a couple of minutes relax and enjoy the journey back south through the Cairngorms in a darn sight better weather than it was coming up that's for sure and you might just be able to notice some white patches where even in July there was still snow on the tops bottom end of the Cairngorms now, heading down towards Perth. Look how busy the A9 is, incredible. We'll skirt round the city of Perth, didn't really see anything worth taking video of to be honest, and then we'll join the M90 and head down past Loch Leven Castle where Mary Queen of Scots was in prison and down onto the new fourth bridge where glass screen permitting as best as possible we will get a view of the old 4th bridge and the 4th railway bridge before we go round and stop for a while and have a, a closer look at both of them. Beyond 
just uh, above the railway bridge is a series of little islands and uh, they're long thin islands and one of them is inhabited but um, during the second world war the naval the navy they were very clever they actually painted these in the battleship grey colours of ships and uh, put a funnel on the top of them they resembled a, sh a large ship in, in, at Anchorage in the Firth there, but of course all it was was solid rock. And the enemy aircraft would come along thinking it was a ship, bomb it, and they were just bombing a little island. It's quite clever, really. <coughs> One of the services you get a better, better view, really, than the other coach.
Yeah, so you look to your left, you can actually see Edinburgh Airport, you can see the uh, control tower. Uh, we'll be able to see it as we come around, and so it'll be in front of us as we come around. Maybe see some uh, aircraft come in and out. Uh, and how busy it is. Porsche will always locked down and so forth, it probably won't be that busy. Standing on a street corner in Gala Shields by the big Catholic church there, and just over behind it, I'll just zoom in, is the bus station interchange, and behind that, across the road, is the new single platform they built with the reinstated Borders Railway, and goes from Edinburgh to Tweedbank on the old uh, Waverley line. I'm on a bridge over the river Gala, from which Gala Shields gets its name. Uh, this is a famous town for weaving uh, tweeds and things like that. And uh, you see from the buildings, very much of that time. And some of the old mills have been converted into flats. Maybe that's one, I don't know. Anyway, this building to the left, could well be one of the old buildings connected with the mills. But this is the River Gala, rather a pretty little river, a little waterfall there, and uh, quite a pleasant little place to have a lunch top, even though probably not enough material here to make a complete program out of it. I'm going to take a walk down here. The trouble is the sun is quite bright, but there's this building here which you might be able to make out cinema. I know that's been there a while. Certainly, it's the Pavilion Cinema, and it's uh, actually open as a cinema, which is quite something. And there is, looks like that might be the main the shopping street here. Breaks the bakers here somewhere. That's a little square here. Uh, they're all piled up outside Greg's. Time for lunch. Some more interesting architecture along this street, particularly the Royal Bank of Scotland. It's rather interesting there. And then as we turn round and come this way,
beautiful sunny day today. We come up towards the what appears to be a war memorial. Rather, hmm, nice smelling flowers. Interesting church building behind it. A clock tower. Maybe that's a newer building than you think. I don't know. But, uh, there is the statue. Now by this point I was bursting for the loo, so I made my way down the road on the left on the way back to the coach, to the new Tesco store that they got here, big supermarket place. It was so weird, I went into the toilet and I had to use the stalls because the standing room was, standing room only, and there's this weird blue light, the whole thing in the toilet was blue light and I couldn't really work out what I was doing but I did it and when I made inquiries afterwards that was my first real contact with a drug problem in Scotland apparently the reason why they use those lights it stops the drug addicts from being able to find their veins because the store was having a problem with syringes and everything I have to admit that was a shock you do hear sometimes on the news about Scotland having a problem with drugs, particularly in the lowlands here, but that was the first time I'd ever really experienced anything physical. Not nice, not nice at all, but it's understandable why Tesco should do that. Oh. Yeah. Monastery. It goes back right to the 12th oh, century, the Abbey here. One foot in England and one foot in Scotland. He's not piping today, he's playing his music. <laughs> but everybody's up here on the border. And you get these lovely views. Over the Cheviot Hills. for miles.
doing as often here. Playing a pipe. Either to welcome you to Scotland or to say good riddance back to England. <laughs> our way back down because we come into Northumberland into the National Park and the Kilda Forest and we've still got lots more mileage before Harrogate see the land see into the city of Newcastle the gate sit on the right hand side Newcastle on the left that's not the bridge I want about there, that's just an ordinary road bridge. Um, the Coat Angle Bridge, which crosses the Tyne, is much further up the Tyne from, Tyne from here. I don't think we can see it just from here. You can see it better coming from the other way, but uh, it's there behind you. And so on to Harrogate and a good night's sleep. I'll be seeing you.